heading towards the fiery culprit. But there are a lot of volcanoes around here. Our pilot, like air traffic controllers across Europe, wary of the ash. Yeah, yeah. My engines are just as vulnerable for the particles as as uh, jet airplane uh, engines. So I really don't want to go in there. Staying upwind, we steer around the rim as magma bursts through the plume. And you can see the difference between the uh, the steam, obviously the, the white uh, uh, cloud that's being produced, and then the steam that is really full of that choking ash. It's much darker. Scientists deem the ash density insignificant, but a dark cloud still stretches out to the North Atlantic towards the UK. Gingerly, we land 400 meters from the volcano and crunch across the ash and snow-covered mountaintop. This really is an extraordinary sight. Our pilot said we're the closest to get to the rim because of the weather conditions today, but also because the strength of the eruption has lessened to some extent. But it's still amazing when you see the shockwave travel through the plume and then you see this molten rock hurling through the air and it seems to hover, such as the strength with which it's forced out of the crater. Back in the sky, we see a flat ice cap which hides the dormant Katla volcano. It's ten times bigger than the current menace. The two are connected by chambers of magma and often erupt in tandem. The power of the explosion on the ice cap is clear from above. It shattered the giant glacier, sending flood water and lumps of ice the size of houses onto the floodplain. The volcano's power has diminished, but it's still a breathtaking sight. A force of nature which paralyzed a continent. Robert Nisbet, Sky News, Iceland.